Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So as you can see, we're using the vacuum chamber once again. And I actually have a little feather right there, as you can see, suspended in front of a 12 volt electric fan. See, I got the batteries, a pressure gauge, and everything in there. To turn it on, I have a little tilt switch that says magnetically controlled. You can see when I turn the fan on, it blows the feather all over the place. This is, of course, at atmospheric pressure right now. So, I want to take this down to Martian conditions. You uh, might have noticed the Martian reference over there. First thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of dry ice to the chamber, just so that uh, the atmosphere gets replaced with CO2. Many of you guys were complaining about that last time. So now I should have a CO2 atmosphere, or at least it'll create one. And now we're going to suck out all of the air, or at least most of it, down to the point for about uh, between four to six millimeters of mercury, which is, of course, the pressure on the surface of Mars. So let's plug in the vacuum pump. And there we go. Give this a little while to suck down. These pieces of CO2 look really interesting in the vacuum. The gas produced causes them to levitate and float all over the place. But if you can see the gauge over there, you can see that the air pressure is just about to the point where it would be considered the surface of Mars. So since we're at Martian air pressure, let's unplug the vacuum pump and uh, let's turn on this fan. Uh, place your bets as to what's going to happen to this feather. Now the fan's only going to produce maybe 10 miles per hour worth of wind. On the surface of Mars, the fastest recorded wind speed is about 70 miles an hour. But let's say the superstorm in the Martian had wind speeds of 200 miles an hour, 20 times what we have here. To compensate for that, I imagine the feather is about 20 times easier to push over than a spaceship. So let's see what happens. Okay, fan's on. And the feather's not moving. In fact, let's zoom in on that. Not even flinching. Let's turn the fan off. Okay, and let's turn it back on. Okay, so there's a little bit of a sway that's caused by the wind that's produced by this fan, but it's not nearly what we had before. It's hardly even noticeable. So there you go. Now, extrapolating from that, you can imagine that even a 200 mile an hour wind on Mars isn't going to do much. Of course, Andy Weir had to figure some way to strand Watney on the surface of the planet, so I'll let him slide on that one. So to finish up this experiment, I'm going to turn this fan back on, just like this. And now I'm going to let the air back in, and let's see what happens as we come back to Earth. Yeah, almost immediately you can see the feathers start shaking around more and more violently. <laughs> Okay, so the air stopped coming into the chamber, so now everything's due to the fan. What I think is interesting is the fan actually sounds different. It doesn't vibrate quite as much. I guess it is designed to run in an atmosphere. So there you go. The air density has a big impact on what wind velocity actually does. Hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.